Hello and welcome to a new episode of Legal Wrangle on International Tax. Today we bring you the case in which Section 206 AA is the bone of contention for the very first time. This section, introduced five years ago by the Finance Bill 2009, imposes a higher rate of tax on a non-resident who does not provide a PAN number. Our other cases in this episode relate to the validity of a broker's quote on price of imported commodity, restriction of corporate services fee, the Bombay High Court's acerbic comments on case consolidation, and of course, transfer pricing on AMP expenses. But let's go to our very first case. The ACC is an Indian company which manufactures, sells and exports vaccines. The tribunal considered the scope of Section 206 AA for the first time. Let's go to Manit for the case details. The ACC had made payments to various non-resident stewards interest, royalty and fee for technical services after due deduction of tax at source. The tax rates provided in the DTAAs were lower than the rates prescribed under Income Tax Act and the SSE had applied the beneficial rate. However, some of the non-residents did not quote the PAN. Revenue invoked Section 206 AA and treated the payments made to non-residents who did not furnish PAN as short deduction of tax. Consequently, demands were raised and the issue was eventually raised before the tribunal. The tribunal ruled in favour of the SSE holding that 206 AA is a procedural provision and not a charging section and it does not override Section 92 of the IT Act. The tribunal held under subsection 2 of Section 90, DTAAs override domestic law and charging Section 4 and 5 of IT Act. Section 206 AA is not a charging section but a procedural provision. SSE correctly applied beneficial rate of taxation under DTAAs. Our next case involves Cargill Foods India, now merged and known as Cargill India. This Indian company, a wholly owned subsidiary of Cargill Mauritius, procured oil from AEs as well as third parties which was refined and processed for sale in the Indian market. The question facing the court was whether a broker's quote based on prices prevailing in the market is only a quote and does not reflect the actual transaction. Manith has the case details for us. The SSE had imported soya bean and sunflower oils from its AEs. Applying the cup method to benchmark this transaction, the SSE relied on a broker price note which is the price prevailing in the commodity market. The revenue concluded a TP adjustment against the SSE by holding that as per Rule 10b1a, the price actually charged or paid for a comparable uncontrolled transaction may only be adopted as a benchmark while applying the CUP method. A broker price note did not qualify because this data was actually merely a quote and not an actual transaction. The tribunal held in favour of the assessee, holding that commodity quotations appearing on recognised exchanges reflected the actual trading price of these commodities. Tribunal held quotations appearing on exchanges reflect the actual trading price prevailing in market, trading carried out on basis of quoted prices. Hence published data from exchanges is available to set price in controlled and uncontrolled transactions. In our next case, the assessee is DSM anti sinochem Pharmaceuticals India, earlier known as DSM Anti-Infectives India. The assessee manufactured life-saving drugs and medicines. A key question involved in this case was whether corporate services fees paid to an AE is required to be restricted up to 50% of the benefit received by the SSE on account of financial services rendered by its AE. Let's go to Manit for the details. The SSE had paid corporate service charges to its AE for rendering corporate services relating to finance, production and sales etc. The quantum of these charges had escalated over the years. The assessee claimed to have benefited from these services in various forms like lower guarantee fee, 
issue of guarantee by the banker without any security and lower interest on the limits sanctioned by the bank. The assessee had quantified these benefits in terms of international practice and only 50% of such benefits were passed on to the AE. Revenue held that the assessee had not identified and quantified these services separately. Accordingly, a 5% ad hoc allowance was given to the assessee and a TP adjustment was made on this account. The tribunal partly held in favour of the assessee. Let's see what it concluded. The tribunal held corporate service charges allowed up to 50% of benefit received by the SSE. AO directed to recompute the adjustment by reducing 50% of the benefit received by SSE from the total corporate service charges. In our next case, the Bombay High Court makes a sharp and acerbic comment against the tribunal on the piling up of appeals relating to similar issues of the same assessi and also suggests a logical solution. The assessi in this case is Societe Generale, which is the Indian branch of a French banking group. Manith has the details for us. The dispute related to taxability of interest paid to its overseas head office without deduction of TDS, receipt of interest earned from head office and overseas branches besides interest income on investment made in tax-free bonds. Exactly the same issues were pending in the various courts and the department continued to decide these issues against the assessee in subsequent assessment years pending a final outcome. This appeal by the revenue reached the High Court. The High Court admitted the appeal on the issues relating to payment and receipt of interest by holding that these were substantial questions of law. However, it came down heavily against the revenue on other issues, holding that the factual situation relating to these questions was unfortunate, disturbing and dangerous. It also suggested that when identical issues are involved repeatedly in the case of the same assessee, the earliest case must be decided first and then applied or followed in subsequent appeals. Let's see what the High Court observed. There is no justification for consolidating matters by keeping the earlier case pending till further appeals accumulate for subsequent years, raising the same issues and questions. It is wiser to decide the earliest case and if the same applies on facts and there is nothing different or distinguishing brought on record in successive assessment years, then the earlier decision can be applied. Our observations are enough to guide the tribunal and we hope that such elementary mistakes are not committed in future. Our last case of this episode deals with the issue of AMP. The assessee is Marubeni India, the wholly owned subsidiary of Marubeni Corporation Japan. The interesting question in this case related to the quantification of capital employed and risk undertaken by the assessee in discharging its advertising and marketing support function for its AE. Let's go to Manit for the facts of the case. The assessee provided agency and marketing support services to its AE. It also arranged feasibility studies and industry analysis for potential projects identified by its AEs. The TPO discarded the TNM method as the most appropriate method, holding that the assessee assumed significant risks and relied on its unique human intangibles, helping its AEs make conscious sale and purchase decisions for their sourcing activities. This resulted in higher profits for the AE. The TPO concluded a TP adjustment against the assessee on this account, holding that the assessee had carried out crucial functions for its AE to conduct business in India. Relying on the decision of the Delhi Tribunal in the case of Li and Fung India, the TPO held that 70% of the total profit earned by its AEs from the goods traded from India should have been given to the assessee. The tribunal held in the favour of the assessee. The Delhi High Court also held in favour of the assessi, holding that the TPO had relied on the tribunal's decision in the case of Lee Fung, which the High Court had subsequently reversed. Here is what the Delhi High Court actually concluded. The Delhi High Court held 
TNMM was the most appropriate method. SSA's risk was limited and minimal with least capital employed. TPO's findings that SSE performed crucial functions for A are not proved. Well, this brings us to the end of this episode of Legal Wrangle on International Tax. You may write to us your comments, criticism and counsel at editor at tioltube.com. Please do subscribe to the TIOL Tube on YouTube. It's free and it will keep you updated on our new posts. Have a good day.